piece of humongous. Idol with a stinging right hand of his own. kind of an unfortunate ending there and one of those uh, accidents that will happen and not the first time you've seen it and I'm sure it will not be the last bam, time that bam, you Bam Bigelow everybody remembers Bam Bam here's a few refreshing scenes to show you how agile this big guy is you know, on the day I was born the nurses all gathered around they gazed in wide wonder at the joy they had found. The head nurse spoke up, said, leave this one alone. She could tell right away that I was bad to the bone, bad to the bone. Bad, 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 bad. Let to go with action here. By the way, uh, by the way, Dave, the in that Jackson match, the uh, World Tag Champs, the SST Samoan Squat Team, will be there also. All right, they have got a 
super card coming up. That's on the 29th in Jackson. You want to be a good one. Keith Ooh. Eric, is it? Oh, it said Bishop has just stepped through the ropes. Stand by for action as the referee calls for the bell. And Sid Vicious at 300 pounds plus goes against Keith Eric, who weighs in at about 226. Boy, well, I'll tell you, this Vicious is so big and so strong, he absolutely makes you quake. I got something right here that needs to be said. Yeah, Robert Fuller back out with it. Because as you well know, he's a former member in my stable. Yes, I and do I know. I signed him in there. Let me clear something up right now. I know people say if you're going to sign in all these muscle heads, these boys with no brains, sometimes, stud, you're going to run into a problem. And right here's where I ran into a problem. And I'm going to cure that problem myself, just like I did when I had problems with the guys in the stable before. I went in myself and I took care of it. And this muscle head right here is not going to be no exception. I'm going to be putting him down, loser leave town style, and he's getting his tail out of here. And I mean, when it goes, it's it's going to go with a lot of pain laid on it. Later. Well, I will say one thing, and I didn't think I'd kind myself saying this. If you show up for the match, I admire you for stepping in in a loser leave town with somebody as giant as this Sid Vicious. Do you really think you're going to be able to take that big guy? You know, Lance. You don't have to go very far to admire me, son, because as long as I've been here and as much a time as you've had to get to know me and to sit and make a remark like that, you're just a half a man I figured you was, that I am the man here. I have pulled up everybody's tail. This muscle man right here ain't going to be no exception. I can tell these people out here they better bring their raincoat when they come down to Memphis because I'm going to knock steroids about halfway to Jackson, Tennessee. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to blast that big boy right there and make him mine. Well, I don't want to be the one to tell you because you'll think of it yourself, but you better bring the whole stable with you because this guy is awesome. There is no doubt yeah, about it's funny. it. It's funny. You wasn't so proud of him. You didn't have such a nice thing to say about him when he had a contract for the stud stable. Now he's working against me and he's the biggest. He's the toughest. He's your best friend. No, you? no. I didn't tell you that. I just told you that he has got to be one of the biggest, strongest, roughest guys I've yes, seen. You better get you a crying towel in, son. You love him much as you do. You're going to be seeing your last to him when you get to Memphis Monday night because Tennessee is my state, son. And that big filter right there, it's going to be mine come Monday night. Well, Keith I Eric. I hope you enjoyed that victory, boy, because it's going to be your last one. Keith Eric was just his. Robert Fuller at a distance running his mouth, and here comes Sid Vicious, and there goes Fuller. He took off in a hurry. Now, I never said he's my best friend, and I don't admire all the things, but I'll tell you one thing, talking about a few pure physical specimen. This son of a gun is every bit of it. Man, he is huge, and he has got muscles. Mm, mm, mm. He's a tough one, 238, and he defeats Keith Eric. Yes, he does, and Eric is nobody's push. We'll be back with more of CWA Championship Wrestling in a moment. <laughs> stepping into the ring and I can tell you what you know usually we tell you that anything can happen in a wrestling match and not to count a wrestler out until the last count of Look three is fallen but you can Roger we can almost just put this one in the book for Lord Humongous right here yeah Humongous you tell me an ordinary man can be this strong Oh, he might just lift it in like a sack of potatoes, no problem. Look at that, he nails Boss Winters, too, knocks him down on the floor. And the crowd says, yeah, more. Now look at this. Got him up on the shoulder. Lord Humongous. Boy, Airplane spin. Yeah, oh, oh, he just throws him across the ring, still spinning. Drops with a knee, down at two, down at three. It's over. 45 seconds of action, and Lord Humongous has just annihilated Boss Winter's uh, rough here. 
And, and Boss, too, as Boss, uh, Boss got hit in the head when he tried to interfere. Oh, you're not, you interfere, though, Bob. Let me get around here. I've got to interview a real man. Detroit Demolition. I want to know what's going on. It looks like you're building something here with all this stuff you guys have brought out just before this match here. What's going on, Gossip? Demolition. <laughs> you see this? This is just a warm-up, Bob. Big and how bad he is, like I said. Two can play at that game. Hey, I even got a little music. If the man upstairs can hit that little music for me. I want to introduce somebody, not only to you, Dutch, but to you, big boy. What is by looking at the master of pain that he's not used to looking eyeball to eyeball with somebody. And as a matter of fact, he had to look up at Humongous. And if he thinks he's bad, if he thinks he's big, he ain't seen nothing yet till he sees my man in action. Oh, I think you're probably right about that. Humongous with the king. We'll be back. <laughs> pick this up in the second fall. Brian Christopher, Sid Vicious, best two out of three. Dropped him down. Hard into the corner goes Brian Christopher. Oh, Vicious hooks the leg. If he does, this could be it, too. And Christopher's leg hanging on the bottom rope. He gets a break. Look at this. Rolls him up. One, two. He got him. Brian Christopher, you win it. A uh, ball number two. So we want a piece now. So at this point, it was one fall apiece, and the winner of this fall would be the winner of the match. Best two out of three. The best two out of three fall. What a Jim up high in the air. Oh, and Vicious drops him down on our table. Oh, there's Bill Superstar Dundee out. Dundee telling Christopher, hey, you can't fight him the way you're trying to fight him in there. And uh, the Superstar takes off the sweater he came in here with, takes off to watch it all. And Dundee wants to get a crack at Sid Vicious. Oh, look at that, Christopher. Shows Bill Dundee, and here is Sid Vicious out. From behind, Vicious knows Christopher. He won the bell ring, says uh, referee T.D. Still. Referee called for the bell. For the next fall. All right, so now, finally, the third fall is underway. One ball apiece, and a special two out of three falls match. Bill Superstar Dundee, and Dundee said he's not going anywhere for this unified world title match. He's John Lance Russell and myself here at ringside. While Sid Vicious and Brian Christopher fight it out. Right in the ring, Vicious swings away with a right hand. Christopher, too sexy, whips him into the corner. Oh, my goodness. Vicious comes out and clotheslines. Referee T.D. Steele. Reversal. Christopher into the road. He got him. Covered. Got the shoulders down. One. Had a spell by 
Ryder trying to jump in. And Bill Dundee runs him off. Could have been a blessing in disguise for Christopher. Would Bill Dundee here at ringside? Oh, no! Did you see that? Bill Dundee knocks the boot of Christopher off of the rope there. And Fisher's kicks away. Uh, you called it there, Corey. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see. Because the fans who were there know that uh, one reason the match ended the way it did last time, or the reason, is because the Spellbinder interfered. But look at this. This week, Spellbinder is banned from ringside. You haven't had a chance to see it. For those who weren't there, take a look now, because we're going to show you some highlights from Sid Vicious and The Undertaker. You saw Paul Bearer holding The Undertaker back from going down on the floor to get at Sid Vicious. And that same attitude is exactly the thing that was in, enabled Eddie Marlin to sign this return match right here at the Mid-South Coliseum. Don't worry about going to Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, or anywhere else. 
Memphis, Tennessee, Monday night, the only place that you're going to see. And the great thing, Dave, that I love about it, a, a lot of times in a return match, a guy's forced into it. He doesn't really want a return match. One guy does, one guy doesn't. Here, you've got the Undertaker who wants that unified title, shows you the importance of that. And you've got Sid Fishes who wants to beat him, bam, 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 right in the middle of the ring. And that's what it's going to be all about. Two guys itching to get oh. at each other, and it's going to happen Monday night right here. Let's take a listen to see what Sid has to say about this return match. Yeah, take a listen. The Undertaker, we meet again. We meet again in my backyard! So I gotta ask you one simple question. After the beating I gave you, after I kicked your stinking guts out, you wanna come and see me again? See, Undertaker, at one time, my friend, we had some things in common. You also walked on the dark side, but now you have chosen a different path. Well, when you come, you have to walk on the dark side with me. I wonder if you can make it, because if you remember, if you'll remember, I took the tombstone, and I rise to the occasion. But see, Undertaker, there was something that didn't happen that night, something that didn't come across, something that you eased out of. See, my friends, you didn't experience this thing around here that we called the power bomb. See, if you take the power bomb, you do not come up. And see, if I get the power bomb on you, Undertaker, it will be easy. So you will be lying at my feet, and you will look at me, and you will say the magic words. You will say, Sid Vicious, you rule the world. One thing uh, Sid didn't mention there, Spellbinder banned from the ring, so he's not going to be around there to interfere again. Dave. Absolutely right. No increase in price. That match is destined to become part of the great tradition of Memphis wrestling. Oh, listen, and one thing I do, in fact, want to, uh, we'll get to tradition. Boy, that just reminded me, because we got some great footage coming up that I know everybody's going to see you on the Monday Night Memories. But uh, the last time that The Undertaker was here, there was a contest. There were five oh, kids yeah. selected to meet him, and these kids really got a kick out of meeting Paul Bear and The Undertaker. There they are. And that contest will be in action again this coming Monday night. There will be other kids selected. Remember, kids' prices, $2 off any section in there. You'll want to be there. Monday night, can't wait for it. Take time out, be back. Here he comes right now. The man that rules the world who uh, will not give a rematch to Brian Christopher. Well, it looks like it's that kind of a day. It is, isn't it, Lance? You know, I sit back here this morning. I've now been in the USWA for, I don't know, four, five, six months. Seems like six years to me. You know, I'm sitting I, I consider you a person with a little knowledge about this business, Lance Russell. I sit back here. I'm listening at you. You're looking at this goof beside you, Dave Brown. You're looking at each other for a little help. You're looking for each other for something to say. What are you trying to, what are you trying to convince each other? Brian Christopher has honestly got a chance against me? Wow. No, 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 honestly. No, uh, yeah, uh, no, honestly, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 honestly, he does not. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. Let's think about it for a second. With all the cornball sayings that you come up with, Lance, all the cornball sayings that Jerry Lawler comes up with, all the stupid things that Brian Christopher has to say, well, see, all those things mean nothing. You can sit right here. You can tell these people that Brian Christopher for just a second he had that towel around his waist for a second. Well, for that second, how did he get there? One, two, three. No, That's how did he get to the one, two, three, Lance? No, you I, tell me. I know what you're referring no, no, to. No, you tell he me. Had it, he had it nullified because he used a chain. Now, is that what you wanted to hear? He used a chain. In the USWA, if you don't have some powder in your pocket, if you don't have a chain around your damn hand, then you mean nothing here. Well, see, I don't use a chain. I don't use a board. 
I don't use a mailbox. No, I haven't, but no, I've you seen. You have it. not. Simple enough. Now, see the things that you can come out here and say. The things Dave Brown can come out here and say. Well, the people at home. See, they're not listening. They're not listening any longer. Why, Lance Russell? For what? Why? I don't know, Sid. What? You tell me why. Because now the USWA has a real man here. They have a real wrestler here. Let me tell you something, Brian Christopher. In this world as we know it now, as professional wrestling, you measure up way down here. Myself, I measure up up here. That's why the people, they all say, Sid, you're the man. Brian, when you look at me, when you climb into the ring and you look at me, I can see that in your eyes. Yeah, you're looking at me and with your eyes, it's pouring out, said you are the man. But, but you must have forgotten. So Christopher, I'm going to tell you, if you want a chance, if you want a chance at this world title, if you think you're worthy of a chance, if you want a chance at it, you're going to have to prove it to me. You're going to have to prove it to the man you are looking at, Sid Vicious, the man who rules this world. Well, it seems to me I've heard that before, and Sid Vicious, there's several other wrestlers around here I would like to say, namely in addition to Brian Christopher, Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee, and even Spellbinder and all. Sid came up with a plan, and we're going to be uh, talking about that a little bit later. Vicious rushing Lawler in, whipped him across the ring. Oh, he caught him with a clothesline. Line it up, and the only thing you can learn is, look at this. Straight up in the air for this unified world title. Big right hand from Sid Vicious. You have to see him in person, fans, just to see what a huge dude this Sid Vicious is. Paul Driver himself, he does! Vicious up there taking a while to give his Shakespearean soliloquy about, oh, oh run your mouth and take that. A pile driver and Sid Vicious. One, two, and Vicious kicks out. Going for that throttle slam. He throttled him too. Choke slammed him right down on the mat. Misses the big leg. Shoots a left hand. Bouncing Vicious head back. Look out, Bill! And referee Bill Rush just trampled by Lawler when Vicious flung him off. And wouldn't you know it, here is the Spellbinder running down the aisle. The Spellbinder comes out with a referee down. Puts him down. The referee counts one, two, three. We have a new unified world heavyweight champion, Jerry the King Lawler. And now here comes Big Daddy Cyrus and Crusher Bowles. They jump in from behind, double team him while he was facing down the spell. Who accidentally hit him while Lawler was holding the two of them? 
Then vicious in. Double close lining. I, I wouldn't deny that vicious deserves it, but from a couple of vagabonds that run the country like these guys, I don't know that I can even be happy about seeing Big Daddy Cyrus and Crusher Bones beating up on Sam. I agree with you. My sentiments exactly. Big Daddy Cyrus, Crusher Bones. These guys are tough, lads. And let me tell you, they're putting it to the former Unified World Champion, Sid Vicious. As Big Daddy had him up for a pile driver, Crusher Bones came down and spiked him into the mat. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that Big Daddy and Bones, they are opportunists. They jumped him from behind and really pounded on Sid. They did indeed, but the surprising thing to me is that Spellfinder is just standing around there, not even attempting to help Yeah, Sid. you would think with the relationship that yeah. they had, and Sid was over, he was telling him, what are you doing? You cost me the title and all that, boom. He got jumped from behind, and then when he needed help, he turned his back on That's him right. and walked right out of there. Watch. We got to take a break, and we'll be back. We got the king coming up in a moment. Okay, I, I, I want to get the interview with Sid, and POB guys are all, who's he talking to? Mr. Antonio, you the chance. Go all the way to the top. What do you say, man? Are you in the Come on, is that hard? Who, in or out of what? Can I please break through here for a second? Here's the man, Sid. What is going on over here? I'm going to tell you something. See, I've overheard a little bit of the little conversations, and it's come to bother me a little bit. So you got to understand something. When you're running a family, an organization like what I have right here, I can't waste my time on little being things called the littles. So what I did, see, because these guys are so stupid that you actually could beat them down to where they're bleeding and they don't cut, can't feel anything else, but they won't stop because it's, it's that stupid. So I was just a little bit smarter, so I went out and I got me a technical team. See, there's one thing you guys will feel. You will feel fatigue, and fatigue makes cowards out of everyone. This, this. You're next! That's right! Stand to me! Step! Part of the Little! Stand up! The tag titles! We might as well pouch them up! They're gonna be ours shortly! The long-awaited debut album from Memphis. Saturday on UPN 30. Be an appropriate partner for the king. Yeah, watch my back. And uh, all of this had to do with uh, Big Daddy Cyrus and Crusher Bones. And the match did take place. Let's take a look at some of that action as it took place. Goes to the neutral corner. Can't get a tag there. Oh, Big Daddy Cyrus. Miss Lawler got pressure. And Lawler. Leap, Lawler. That's what the crowd's hollering. Jump. He got him. Here comes Sid. Flip to Bones. Flip to Cyrus. Down goes Bo. Look at that monster. Waller comes back after Big Daddy Siren. Sid. Throttled him right up there with a big choke slam. Waller pounding the head of Cyrus on the table. Look at Spellbinder came breaking in. He grabbed the bell, jumped up in there. Now slamming away on Sid Vicious. As Crusher Bones holds him, Big Daddy Cyrus just kind of neutralizing Lawler. And Spellbinder, who Sid said he wanted after turning his back on him, when Big Daddy Cyrus and Crusher had him, he's taking some awful shots at Vicious. Yeah, he sure is, Lance. He's got that weight belt that Vicious brought in here. Slapping Vicious with that thing. The Spellbinder turned 
bet on his old partner, Big Jess, and I promise you, he will pay for that, Lance. I guarantee you that. Mm. Oh. Well, I'm not really sure whether uh, Spellbinder, Big Daddy, Cyrus, Crusher, Bones, Big Business, Brown have any idea what they may have turned loose. But uh, those were some mean shots taken at Big Sid Vicious. That's all I can say. And we're looking at Big Daddy Cyrus right here. Well, you know, Lance Russell, I've just got a few things to say about that tape. Shut up! You know, I was the legal man in the ring with Sid Vicious. Pin my partner. Well, Sid, we ain't done with you. I think you bit off just a little bit more than you could do. Enough with that. Super brawl, baby. I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to be a big brawl. It's going to do the biggest brawl in the world. Anything goes. Great change. Great forward tackle helmet. Bring your brother-in-law. Bring your son. Bring your children. Because it's going to be a sacrifice, Jack. Me and Crusher Bones, we're going to rip this thing apart. Because you might leave. Pandora's. Fox, baby. Well, I don't know whether you've seen them, but by golly, you better pay attention because we've got some classic brawls. USWA has brawls like nobody else has seen. Shut up. How did it feel, Sid? How did it feel to have this on your back? You never thought it would happen, did you? But you don't rule the world anymore, baby. We're going to rule it. We're going to rule it. King! <laughs> You're going to feel it on your back, baby. Okay, okay. It's time to get up to the ring. Oh, oh yeah. we got a match coming up. Oh, yeah. Big Daddy Cyrus pressure bones to Corey. Okay, Lance, we're ready. One ball, ten minutes in time for this bout. First introducing at a combined weight of 494 pounds from Jackson, Tennessee, Timmy Terry. And his partner from Memphis, Tennessee, Edric Hines. Their opponents today, a combined weight of 500... In Man, you know something? Uh, you have got to be the absolute worst announcer in the history of professional wrestling. So why don't you just step, just step back, step back. Let me tell you who their opponents are. You are looking at none other than Big Daddy Cyrus and Crush Your Bones. Can we get a little respect, please? <laughs> Business round, and then back to you, Anthony. You, Corey. Big business Brown trying to take over in the ring. Meanwhile, Crusher Bones and Big Daddy Cyrus, they're dangerous. Everybody's in the ring. Timmy Jerry and Edric Hines finding themselves in trouble immediately as the match gets underway. Well, of course, they didn't wait for the bell. They just jumped across the ring, grabbed Timmy, grabbed Edric, started beating on him right away. And Edric in there with the two of them, and Big Daddy Cyrus now remains. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Referee is Bill Rush. And I'll tell you, Big Business Brown, you've got to be the rudest person I've ever seen. Very little doubt about that, let me tell you. Edric Hines in serious trouble. I tell you what, this Big Daddy Crusher, he's huge, he's powerful. And he and Crusher really like to brawl, too, Dave. Hey, we've got a USWA title match coming up this very day. As a matter of fact, following this match, plus the fact we've got scheduled, if we have the time for it, Jerry Lawler and the Spellbinder. What a great show. And some more flashback brawls coming up, too, a little bit later on. Man, what a show today. Don't go away. Timmy Terry whipped over into the rope with a double foot. Crusher and Big Daddy Cyrus dropped with a double elbow. A count of one, two, three. Just over match. As the hands are raised and Big Daddy Cyrus and Crusher Bones pick up a relatively easy win. Stay right where you are. We've got the USWA title match coming up in just a moment. WCW World Heavyweight Champion, this is Psycho Sid Vicious! Oh my God, here we go! 
show. Oh, two of the biggest, two of the baddest in the wrestling business today. Psycho Sid Vicious, known the world over against the number one. Oh, Sid's got it on him. Sid's got him hooked up, and he's putting it on the big man. Big club and forearms as Lone Star to Texas Hangman is being pounded by Sid Vicious. Lone Sid Star. Vicious standing nearly seven foot tall. Lone Star. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Sid will not turn him loose. Sid has choked him out. The referee's counting him out. Sid Vicious has been disqualified. The Texas Hangman is down in the ring. And Psycho Sid. Oh, as he still continues. The referee's already called this one off. Tommy Potter taking the back, thrown down the ringside. Referee giving off. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner as a result of a disqualification, Lone Star. Oh my God, Sid's got himself disqualified. Lone Star continues with his win streak here in the SCW. He is the hottest commodity on the wrestling circuit today. The number one unsigned blue chipper. Lone Star to Texas Hangman, but Psycho Sid Vicious has had his way with the big man tonight. Penelope in that ring. Oh, no. Girl, you're in the wrong damn spot. You ought to know better. Don't you ever. Oh, no. Tommy, this can't be good. No. Don't you do it, Sid. I grew up watching Psycho Sid. He is oh, not afraid. Oh, you better get Try on your knees, on girl. Penelope. You better get on your knees. Because the big Texas hangman, wait a minute, Sid seen him on oh, a big foot and Lone Star is down. Oh, Penelope's in trouble. Sid could break her in two. I know this crowd in Nashville wants it. Wait, out comes Hammerjack, Dan Murrow, Lone Brian Star Turner. again kicked around the face. What Here are they comes doing? a bunch of guys from the back. Aaron Hammerjack, out also. Dan Morrow, Lone Star is down. Sid kicked the hell out of him. He has kicked him down. Oh, and once again, Lone Star is down, the big Texas hangman. Lone Star just being completely obliterated by Psycho Sid. Psycho Sid came in here with a mission, and his mission is to destroy everybody in the SCW. The big Texas hangman has been manhandled like I've never seen before. Sid's in rare fall. Oh, no. no. Sid has Hammerjack. 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 Oh, oh, no. Sid's got him by the throat. Oh, no. Choke slam. The big psycho Sid one handed choke slam. Oh, to Hammerjack. Brian Turner. Oh, my oh, God. No. Brian Turner made the Brian biggest Turner. mistake of his life. And now he's going to taste a little bit of what the Texas hate got. Don't tell me, not Brian oh. Turner. Oh. What a choke slam. Oh, my God. Psycho Sid is oh. unstoppable. He just kicked Lone Star again. And Sid, He's all over that Texas hangman. And can, Sid stomping away. Sid Vicious has single-handedly cleared out half the dressing room. Oh, he's got Dan Morrow oh, now. Dan Murray oh, Dan just slapped a taste out of Morrow's mouth. He just painted Dan Morrow. And again. Oh, Morrow. Oh, no. Sid's in rare form. Oh. I pity the man that he's got his hands on, Tommy. I'm glad I'm out here. Thank God, Dan Morrow. Into the Cobra Clutch. Unbelievable. Oh, oh. oh, and Sid planted him. Everybody, but a Texas Hangman refusing to leave. Lone Star trying to get back to his feet one more time. How is Lone Star He said, let me him? have him. Oh. oh, and Sid put him down again. But the Texas Hangman just won't quit. He's still crawling. He's crawling with guts. Oh, no. He's crawling with instinct. Sid eyeing down Aaron no Draven. No way. Oh, Aaron no. Draven is going to pay the price. Aaron Draven, baby, He's going to pay the oh, price. Oh, no. Oh, no, Sid. Here it comes. Oh, oh no. yes. Here it comes. Are we going to He's going to drop the bomb. We're going to see it here in Nashville. Aaron Nobody Draven doesn't up. like Sid. Nobody. Oh. Vicious bomb. Vicious bomb. Bomb beam. But the big Texas Hangman still trying to get up. Sid he won't Vicious. quit, Tommy. That says so much about the guts of the big man. Sid has oh, destroyed no. him, but the big man won't it's leave. Not over yet. He keeps coming back. Sid choking him with his own bull rope. 
but to Texas Hangman, never quit. There's not an ounce of quit in him. Six foot eight, 302 pounds, but tonight belong to seven foot, Big Sid Vicious and the Vicious Bomb. Sid Vicious is back. SCW better bow to its knees and pay homage as the crowd in Nashville calls. Sid, 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 who's the man in SCW? Psycho Sid Vicious is, Tommy, and nobody can doubt it. For the one hour talent and your referee, Five it's the Three minutes. I remember when he broke his leg. How about? Break a leg. Not really. I can still see it. I can still see it. I can still see it. Oh, thank God that was on paper. Can you imagine that being alive to you? Jesus Christ. He's still on YouTube. Get him, Sid! He just wrestled Heath Slater. Treat him like Heath Slater. This is not working out. Show them how we do it 1992 style. Oh! Yeah, that hurt, didn't it? Definitely got shit doing this match. Rethink your tactics. Are they? <laughs> I'm putting this on YouTube, you know that, right? Oh, you're taking it back to 2000. Huh? 
What? Who's the chicken now? Uh, how many? Who's the chicken now? Steal you. Now you're playing the part. Kids say chicken, we say asshole. <laughs> Let's blame the first match on this, shall we? Woo! Disrespect! Now we can't see nothing, so let's just hope they come to the other side. <laughs> oh, he's going to see this thing. Thanks for bringing this way, Sid. This is going to go No, no, when the devil is basically damn near. No, when the devil is damn near basically the whole time. Oh my god. Uh, See, when I say when I say time machine, you it's because it would be something we can't back down. Ah! 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 But if you go to if you go to sporting events and shit like that, nothing happens that you just there. Cool. Ah! Good job, man. Good job. Nerdy. Oh, oh this is awesome. Nerd.
my God, this one's getting underway right away. As Sid Vicious, I'm telling you, he's a madman. He hadn't changed. He's still Psycho Sid and his best friend, one of his best friends in the world, Bobby Eaton. And Sid is paying the price. Bobby said he wouldn't do it out of respect. He would walk away. But Sid refusing to let him. Sid's here on a mission. He wants to hurt people, Jingus, because that's the way Psycho Sid Vicious is. Absolutely. Sid is a maniac. We've known that for years. The one thing I'm wondering is Bobby Eaton's chances in this match. Because after all, Sid, this is, I believe, his first, if not one of his first matches back after that long layoff he took due to that horrific leg injury. He's been out for four years. That can put a lot of rust on a person. That can give Bobby a fighting chance in this thing. You look at Sid Vicious and you tell me there's an ounce of ring rust on that man. Unbelievable. Sid Vicious has not changed. It's just like the day that injury happened. He is big. He is strong. He is healthy and tan. That is Sid Vicious. And I would not want to be Bobby Eaton right now. I would not want to be in that ring with Sid because Sid has everything to prove tonight. Sid sending a message to everybody that turned their back on him. Sid sending a message that he is still the man. He is still Psycho Sid as he is pounding, pounding Bobby Eaton in the back, in the back of the lungs. And as you know yourself, that attack to the back. What is Vicious said even for? We all know the Absolutely. biggest, the baddest, the highest impact power bomb of them all. The skyscraper himself, Psycho Sid, is setting Bobby Eaton up for the power bomb of his life. Skyscraper? Well, there's an old chestnut. Sid coming in, boot right into the ribs of Bobby Eaton. That big size 16 right into the ribs, and he's stomping Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton, Pearl Harbor, had his back to him, believed his friend was going to let him walk away, but that's not what happened. Sid fed him to the wolves. He hung him out, and that's his friend. Imagine what Sid Vicious would do if he didn't even like the Jingus. I don't want to imagine what Sid would do to me. Right now, what he's doing to Bobby Eaton is bad enough, but Bobby's fighting back. I'm telling you, there's not an ounce of quitting, Bobby Eaton. I don't care how hurt you are. Oh, wait a minute. He tried for a slam, but that back, oh! Sid right abused. back in there, right in the small of the back with a massive forearm. Bobby Eaton tried for a scoop and a slam, but the back already to the point where he couldn't support the weight. Sid running halfway across the ring and planted right into the lungs, right into those short ribs. Bobby Eaton's got to be hurt. Sid snap marrying him over and laying that weight in on him. He's compressing down on that neck and Absolutely. Now to say that Bobby Eaton doesn't know how to fight a big man, you'd be wrong. After all, this is a guy who spent the entire 80s trading blows with the Road Warriors. You're not kidding. I've seen those guys in scaffold matches. Not of the Skywalkers. Great American bash. Unbelievable stuff. Bobby Eaton, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, tag team wrestler in the history, bar none, of professional wrestling. But Sid Vicious, the animal that he is, Sid Vicious is almost unstoppable. Sid Vicious, they say, is a man that knows no fear. And a man that knows no fear will die in that ring. And four and a half years ago, Sid Vicious almost did. But where's he at tonight, Jingus? He's right here in SCW. And he's standing tall in that ring. And he's showing you why Psycho Sid is still an entity in professional wrestling. Sid has always been a little bit of a bully in the ring. In this match, he's got a full head of hype and probably a good 50 pounds of size advantage on Bobby Eaton, maybe a couple years younger as well, and he still doesn't care. He's still attacking him from behind, still using all the dirty tricks he knows how to beat up one of his best friends. Why? Because Sid Vicious knows Bobby Eaton. He knows him like a book. They travel together. They're the best of friends, and he knows he can't take Bobby Eaton lightly because Bobby Eaton is not a pushover. Bobby Eaton is not a has-been. Bobby Eaton is one hell of a wrestler, and Psycho Sid knows it. And he continues to pound the short ribs of Bobby Eaton. However, Bobby, of course, most of his expertise in his glory days came from tag team wrestling. Sid is and always has been a single specialist, just another mountain to climb for Bobby if he wants to have a chance of even surviving this Don't match. Don't you ever forget you say he was always a tag wrestler, but that is not true. Bobby Eaton was an NWA, WCW, World Television, Television Champion, champion. I'm for sorry. a long, long time. Bobby Eaton has been successful in singles and tags. Bobby Eaton has a world of experience. Bobby Eaton knows. Ooh. 
the ins and outs of that ring. And he's still fighting back, taking it to Sid Vicious. But Sid slowly, methodically, setting his game plan into effect. And he's wearing down the back of Bobby Eaton. And there's going to come a time, if Eaton don't get some offense started, that Sid's going to put him away with that power bomb. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it happen to Bobby Eaton. Because if you've seen the look in Sid Vicious' eyes, once that man's horsing into the air, God forbid, it's not going to be a pretty landing, Jingus. He makes the sign of the cross sometimes before he does it. It's not a specifically religious symbol. He just means that he's about to bury whoever he's going to hit it on. Sid Vicious gets that look in his eyes, a look like, like a serial killer, almost a, a look of euphoria as he knows he's going to drive a man through the mat. And his game plan tonight is simple. He is going to pound Bobby Eaton's back. He's going to pound his ribs, lungs, and kidneys, and he's going to set him up for the coup de grace. Bobby Eaton is no slouch. Bobby Eaton no pushover. Bobby will not give in. He'll ask no quarter and give none Jingus, and he'll fight back. Look at him. Just like what he is now. He oh, the back gave out. Bobby Eaton again tried for a scoop and a slam on sheer instinct, but that back has took too much punishment. It's the way to Sid Vicious causes him to buckle and go down. Sid right back in on that neck. Hey, Sid's feet are under the ropes. Technically, that shouldn't be. And hey, he's hooking the rope, the bottom rope with that right foot of his, gaining extra illegal leverage. The sheer size of Sid Vicious has totally blocked the view of referee Kurt. And Kurt cannot see that Sid was using the ropes for leverage. But the tremendous, tremendous girth and shoulder with the Sid Vicious totally blocking the referee's view. Referee, oh, wait a minute. He just caught him and he's making him break the hole. He had to do a push up to see around him, but he finally did. Sid's Sid showing that he has no respect for him. Sid has no respect for anybody. He's an animal. He's a monster in that ring. And I feel sorry for Bobby Eaton right now because Sid is having his way with beautiful Bobby. Beautiful Bobby never had a chance for the get goes. He was Pearl Harbor and never seen it coming. I wonder, I wonder if this would have thing would have been man to man, nose to nose. Would Bobby Eaton be in the predicament he's in right now? I don't think so. But Sid Fish is taking full advantage of the opportunity. And Bobby paid the price, Jingus. Now, Bobby trying to fight out of this camel clutch. That's Sid's favorite hold to wear a guy down with. Bobby gets to the ropes and Sid just keeps beating on him. Just pounding and pounding and pounding into the upper back, into the kidneys, into the lungs, in through the short ribs. Bobby Eaton's back has got to be screaming in pain. He's bleeding in the corner. I don't know at this point if he can stand on his own. Sid has pounded him. Bobby Eaton looks, oh, another shot right in the short ribs. He just got to be hurt. How much more can he take, Jingus? I haven't seen anything this sickeningly violent since the last Mel Gibson movie. This is just gross. Sid trying to dismantle his best friend and doing a pretty good job of it, I have to admit. If Sid cracks one of those ribs, he could puncture a lung. He could some... Hey, they're saying ring the bell. Ring the bell. Referee said he's had enough. He's calling it quits. Oh, he pushes the referee out of the way and continues to pound on him. We got to get some help out here. Somebody from the back. We got to get some help. Sid Vicious refusing. Refusing to stop. Now the referee called the referee. Here comes the other referees. Coming in. They're trying to get Sid off. Finally. Finally, some semblance of order as Sid stepped away. Go take it to him, Sid Tommy. I ain't getting near him. Mic. Be careful out there, Tommy. See, that's what I was saying. Bobby could have took the easy road. Let's go. Sid Vicious came here with hurting somebody on his mind. He can say what he wants to, but I know his intentions, and they were cruel. Folks, we're back on NWA Main Event Television and Mike. Another match with Jerry the King Lawler. We saw one earlier in the show. We saw the video of Jeff the Crippler Daniels. And now we're going to take you back to Lawler 35, a tribute fit for a king. 
celebrating Jerry Lawler's 35th year in the wrestling business as the king of wrestling. And this was Friday, November the 7th, and his opponent standing across the ring, the monster Sid Vicious. That's correct, Jason. If you also look on the outside of the ring, you'll see the number one wrestling manager in the world, Jimmy Hart. And Mike, uh, a lot of our viewers might be wondering why this show, why this match is airing right now. And it's all due to tonight, tonight, tonight. Portland, Tennessee, the Richland Park Gym. That man right there, Jerry the King Lawler, returns for the first time in 30 years to the Richland Park Gym in Portland. And he faces Jeff the Crippler Daniels. Mike, it doesn't get any bigger than this for Portland. You're exactly right. We're expecting a sellout crowd, Jason. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, ringside seats are being reserved fast. Call now. Pick up the phone and call now. If you're coming tonight, you want us to have your tickets waiting for you. 615-262-4455. The number's right there on the screen, along with the information. Richland Park Gym, Portland, Tennessee. Lawler will be in action. And Sid, vicious with a little action. There, a little vicious action, no pun intended, with that huge body slam onto Jerry the King Lawler. You know, it hasn't been uh, too long ago we saw Bid Bid Sid Vicious on WCW break his foot, Jason. I don't know if you've seen the footage from that, but I remember when it happened. I was watching TV, and man, that leg and that foot just crumbled up from under him. Absolutely, and Sid back in action after a long hiatus, and honestly, looking as good as ever is the big seven-foot-tall monster, Psycho Sid Vicious, former WWF WCW heavyweight champion. I cannot believe Sid Vicious here at the Mecca, the Nick Goulas Sports Arena, and he picks Lawler up for a second time, going for that body slam and just stalls, letting the blood rush to the head as he slams him down hard. Lawler hits that mat hard, Jason. And I want to tell you, Sid Vicious looks like he's in 110%. But he's got that edge. He's got Jimmy Hart in that corner, Jason. The biggest wrestling manager in history. Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. And folks, if you weren't here on November the 7th, you sure missed a great show. 650 fans packed the Mecca, the Tennessee State Fairgrounds in Nashville to help the King celebrate 35 years in wrestling. What a historic night it was for Nashville, Tennessee, and pro wrestling in a whole. And Jerry the King Lawler facing tough competition. This wasn't a walk in the park for the King as he tries now to body slam Big Sid Vicious, and it doesn't look like he's going. You know, it's an awful lot of weight for Lawler to pick up, but tonight, 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 Jason, in Portland, Tennessee, Jeff Daniels is not as heavy as Sid Vicious. Jeff might be able to be the recipient of a few of those Lawler body slams. And now Jimmy Hart mocking the fact that Jerry Lawler thinks he can slam Sid Vicious. The mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart saying that's absolutely absurd. And there's that evil laugh we've heard from him many times. You hear it each and every commercial break. The official sponsor of Bell Bondsman for, I, I don't know how they got him. Free at last bonding, Jason. Free at last. Well, if you need a spring, give those guys a ring. That's what he says. And he is exactly right. Just call our friends. You know, Jason, bad things happen to good people. If that happens to you, don't forget free at last bail bond company. Male species. And picks Lawler up again. Going to go for the body slam and once more slams him down. Jerry, come on and get up. Don't you get hurt. I couldn't stand that very long. That would be money out of your pocket. You know, oh, high pockets Mike Porter, ladies and gentlemen. I think I did a pretty good job of hiding the ringside, chanting, helping, leading the chance. You know, Jerry, 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 you can't see me. That's really stayed off camera. I doubt you were in the crowd. You must have been too busy selling grab bags. Oh, I was there, Jason, believe me. And that now bag's sit- just a dollar. Having raffles, you could win this just for a dollar. You could win this right here. Or only a dollar, Jason. Collar and elbow tie-up from Jerry the King Lawler and Psycho Sid Vicious. 9-1-1, please, Rapata. 
Sid picks him up again and slams him down once more. Jerry the King Lawler has on, got Jerry. to be filling the effects. Come on, Come on Jerry. I'll get you a massage after this is over with. I'll carry you down to the local massage parlor. I'll get you back in shape, brother. Come on and get up. Right after the match, we'll go. go to, can I mention Deja Vu on here? I don't guess I can. I don't guess I can. I can't do that. I was going to take him down on here for a night of entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, all professional tactics on the part of Mike Porter are now out the window. Any pro professional approach towards his commentating duties tonight are now gone. Please disregard anything that comes out of his mouth as Jerry the King Lawler trying to get Sid Vicious up. Rapato, on second thought, don't call 911. Let him stay on the floor. Wait a minute, we're going to hear from Jimmy Hart. What's he saying, Jason? I don't remember. Well, if you'd shut up, we could hear him. He said, don't be crazy. You're not going to be able to slam my monster, Sid Vicious. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I think Sid Vicious has slammed Jerry, and I hope he's not hurt. Three times, not once, but three times, if you notice during the match, we paid the attention. I hope and pray that Jerry Lawler is not hurt. Jerry. Vicious now standing in the middle of the ring. Lawler also going to circle once more. Jerry the King Lawler with 125% of the fans' approval here in Nashville, Tennessee. So close to Memphis, so close to home, Jerry Lawler will always be the king of Mid-South Wrestling. I'm going to tell you, Jason, when this territory a few years ago under the tutelage of Nick Goulis, Nick Goulis, for most people don't know, ran 30-something towns a week. Now, how Seen can, the book. You sure have in Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama. That was Nick's territory. I worked for Nick during that period of time, and I'm going to tell you, one of the largest promotions, Jerry Lawler was in Memphis, Birmingham, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Louisville, Evansville, all over the territory. And that's the reason Jerry Lawler is known today. Not to mention he's one of the greatest to ever lace up a pair of boots. When you talk about wrestling, yes, you speak of Ric Flair and you speak of Brett the Hitman Hart, but 95% of those audiences also speak of Jerry the King Lawler. You're exactly right, Jason. We do not want to take anything away from those wrestlers. Luthez in the past, uh, Al and Don Green in this territory. You know, those grasslers have been here. We don't want to take nothing away from those guys. But Jerry Lawler is the one person that excelled in the business here today. Jerry Lawler now. Collar and elbow tie up once more between these two. Lawler now backing Vicious into the corner. Referee Kevin Lawler. Maybe a little conspiracy there. Wait a minute. Lawler's got him. Going to go for that right hand. And he nails him right in the jaw. Right in the, the right hand, right in the jaw. And look, it didn't even phase Vicious. I'm going to tell you what, Jerry Lawler gave him all he got. And Sid Vicious looked up, looked at him, felt of his mouth, looked back at Lawler. I don't think it even phased Sid Vicious. You're supposed to say something. Now. Sid, Vi Sid Vicious now mouthing across the ring to the king. And that punch to the jaw that would nor knock a normal man out did not even face Sid Vicious. There's another big fist by Lawler. Big fist by Lawler and the second fist three times. Lawler's known for those jabs and those right hands, and it's not even phasing Sid Vicious. It certainly isn't, Jason. I don't understand because I'm going to tell you, I've been hit by those fists, and I know. Boy, but that sure did face the king, that clothesline lariat right across the throat, and that sent him down, but... Quickly back on his feet. Come on, Jerry, get on your feet. Take this guy out. It's about time. You got to give him all you got. I know it's. I know it's hard. I know Sid Vicious is a big, tough man. But Jerry, come on. You got to do something. Are you a little bit biased in this match. Not at all, Jason. I don't want Lawler to get hurt. I'm just sort of edging him on. Why is that? And now just stomping on the sternum of Jerry Lawler. Is Psycho Sid Vicious. Vicious now arguing with referee Kevin Lawler. 
Kevin may be going to warn Vicious that if he continues. Watch Jimmy Hart in the corner, Jason. Look. And what a choked. shot of that little snake cheating on the outside, choking the king. Yes, he's got this. has got to be a stop to it. I've got to go to ringside if this keeps up. I sure don't want Lawler Damons in this match in any shape, form, or fashion. Sid Vicious, now you better watch out. Those right hands right to the sternum once more. Brings him out to the middle. Picks him up. Sidewalk slam. Pen a tip. Hook of the leg. Referee down. One, two. Boy, how close was that? That was very close. I sure don't want my buddy beat in the middle of the ring. Two uh, count in once more. Lawler kicks out right before the count of three. A blatant choke right in front of the referee. Kevin Lawler is counting Sid Vicious, and Sid Vicious has the experience to know he's got to break that count at four, Jason. The only reason Kevin Lawler hasn't disqualified Sid Vicious right now is for the pure pure fact that he want, he knows these fans want to see a clean finish in this match. I he knows they want to see someone win by a pinfall or submission, and that's the only reason he's let it go as far as he has. I think you're right, Jason. Kevin Lawler is tolerating you now. He goes for another pin. Look, one, two, and Lawler gets that shoulder up, breaks the creek right. Another one. He hooks the leg this time. Again, Lawler breaks it at the two count. Frustration starts to set in right here as you see Sid Vicious grab onto that chin lock, lean his whole body forward, apply that much more pressure, and Jerry Lawler is in a bad, bad way right here as we see that mouth of the south, the snake, Jimmy Hart once more on the outside. I hope Kevin Lawler watches Jimmy Hart and keeps, keeps him from interfering in this show. And there he is telling the people like, they're getting behind Lawler shouting Jerry, Jerry again. Much and, like uh, you. And, uh, very much like me. I'm there leading the chant, but I'm staying out of the camera so can anybody see me? He's laying it to Lawler in the corner, those big fists right to the side of the face. Getting a warning by the referee Kevin Lawler. Like I said, I think the only reason this match hasn't ended in disqualification is because the referee knows the fans want to see a true winner. They want to see their king, Jerry Lawler, with an upset victory over Psycho Sid Vicious. Jimmy Hart got the attention of the referee just a few minutes ago. and uh, Watch this again. Jimmy Hart, get away from there. You know better than that. I think I'm going to go grab him and put him back in his chair. Once more choking Lawler while referee Kevin Lawler is distracted by Sid. And now Jimmy Hart claiming he, he did absolutely nothing. Of course he's going to claim that. He better sit over there and behave yourself. And now the referee questioning Tim White on the outside, Lawler's first tag team partner ever, who's been totally innocent since the thing started. Jim White now lives in Eastern Kentucky, and he drove all the way down here just to be in Lawler's corner tonight, encouraging Lawler. Lawler taking – I'm telling you, Sid Vicious is taking it to Lawler. Those heads at the – throwing his head in the turnbuckle. I don't know how much more of this I can stand. I'll have to go in and try to do something about this, Jason, if this keeps on. Well, Jim White's there for a reason on the outside. He, I, be, I believe if he sees it getting too far out of hand that he will step up. So just rest assured, your prize pony is still okay. Let's hope so. I'm going to go over there and whisper in Jim White's ear and tell him he's got to do something if this continues because we sure don't need Jerry Law to hurt by any means. Sid Vicious is taking it to Jerry in the corner. I don't know how much more, Jason, or Jerry's going to be able to take of this. I'm getting worried at this point, Jason. Calm down, Mike. It'll be okay. Man, I hope so. Come on, Jerry. And another big fist to Lawler in the corner. Getting another, another warning from the referee, Kevin Lawler. Sid Vicious now brings Lawler back up. And a vicious shot right to the side of the head. And Lawler, you see his body just hanging on the ropes, not even able to hold himself up with his own feet. You're exactly right. Our mate Annie came down here and was trying to do some vacuuming, so I had to turn it off right quick. She turned it on. But that's okay. Let's, we'll forgive her this time. Lawler is still taking the brunt of this match, Jason. Sid Vicious with those big hands and fists right to the head of Lawler. Come on, Lawler. Lawler has shown no signs of fighting back yet as Sid Vicious continues to stomp in the forehead of Jerry Lawler with those fists right to the forehead. My goodness. If you notice, then the, Jimmy Hart ran over and ran back. Kevin had to get him back. Look, a low blow by Lawler. 
Lawler said, I've had enough. And another low blow by Lawler. Vintage Jerry the King right there. Those low blows to Sid Vicious. The big man is finally down off of the turnbuckle. And there's the jabs, the South Paul jabs from Jerry Lawler. Come on, Jerry, you can do this. Big fist to Sid Vicious, several of them. Vicious just wheeling. They were going down, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, boy, the strap is down. The strap is down and a big drop kick to Sid Vicious. And look at Lawler in his glory after that huge drop kick to the monster. Lawler is taking it to him and in full control right now of this match. Those multi-fed. Jimmy Hart's up on the apron. Sid Vicious is getting Lawler up very down. slowly. Lawler, what's he going to do? Picks him up and he... He slams him down. The Man, can you slam. believe this? Look at these people on their feet. He grabs Jimmy Hart he and a ducks. big fist. Jimmy Hart ducks the fist. And now, no. Jimmy Hart holding on to Jerry the King Lawler. Vicious comes in and from third base. My goodness, from the outfield. Nails Jimmy Hart. Roll up. And that does it. Can you believe this, Jason? A big win tonight for Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry the King Lawler victorious at Lawler 35. Folks, we're out of time. Don't forget, next week, check us out. Footage from Waverly, Tennessee, also featuring Jerry the King Lawler.